welcome back welcome back welcome back so last week's video i did not post y'all will get two videos this week so this one's going to be about going back to college after five years of a gap year <laughs> that turned into a five-year gap year okay so going back to college I did dual enrollment in high school, so by the time I was a junior in high school, I had finished all of my high school credits. So I was starting two college classes after I went to high school. I would only go to high school by my senior year until 11 a.m. I wouldn't even be there for lunch. And then I would, then I took two um, college classes. So yes, um, so I've been doing college since I was in high school and always had like honed in on the fact like, oh, I'm not gonna go into debt to go to college. Um, which now I'm realizing there is a benefit to doing your student loans and paying them off um, along with other things that will build your credit profile so that by the time you graduate college, if you have enough credit uh, history with your student loans and credit cards and just paying off, you know, borrowing and paying off, babe, they'll trust you and you'll have a decent line of credit and a great credit score. So there's benefits to it. But um, I didn't know that back then. I was just like, oh, no, I'm staying away from debt. I'm staying away from debt. I had took so many, like, accounting, marketing classes, like, just fun, personal finance. I took personal finance for fun as a fun math class, and they taught me so much. I was like, okay, baby, I'm staying away from debt, okay? Because y'all be saying y'all be getting so caught up in debt. Uh-uh, it won't be me. And then I didn't realize it's good debt and bad debt and it's ways to, like, you know, filter through that. But anyways, so, yes, I, um... That's what I had decided to do though. I just waited and then that wait of a year, I did end up going to college, cosmetology school within that year I did enroll. Um, but I once I started, I was like, okay, this is not for me. Went to cosmetology school and was like, they're teaching me stuff that baby I can do in my sleep. And you know, I went to a palm colored uh, cosmetology school and it was a classroom full of black girls getting taught by palm colored people. And I was just kind of like, babe, we can do y'all's hair. Like y'all can't do our hair. Like, it's not the other way around. Like, y'all are teaching us basic stuff that we know how to do. And yes, it's technicalities, disin disinfectant, like just certain things that we had to learn for us, like keeping things clean, anti-fungus, stuff like that. But still, like, the other stuff, I was, that's when we, got, when we got to that portion, like, this is what y'all gonna be teaching as far as hair. And we're just learning about how to do white people's hair texture, not black people, nothing that would really benefit me because... Um, I already, you know, knew how to do hair for the most part. Just the cleanly aspect and factor was definitely a plus. But anyways, like I was saying, you guys, so yeah, I had decided to postpone the four year and just try to do the trade school for hair for the, uh, I think it was like 18 month class or something. Um, and I only lasted a month <laughs> um, before I was like, bye. And then, um, yeah, let me think. And then I had took, crazy enough, I had took everything they had given me in hair school and started doing hair, um, being a travel hairstylist. And that went on for two years. So this is how we got to a five year gap because I spent a year and a half waiting, two years doing, three years actually doing a travel hairstylist. And then that last year I transitioned into like property management, real estate, Airbnb, short term rentals, things like that. So this is how the gap happened because I thought like the entrepreneur's lifestyle was better than going to get the degree. And I still kind of think like, it's just whatever you can make work, like whatever feels right for you. And I did entrepreneur style for a while and it was great. Don't get me wrong. It was great. Um, lots of, you know, you work, you make it work. You know, I made it work. I was a hair traveling hairstylist. I did other side hustles. I did property management for short term rentals, um, all types of things. I ran my own Airbnb different things like that. that. Those videos are on this uh, channel as well. So like in that time frame, that five year gap, those are all things I was doing. And then I finally was like, okay, all of that stuff, exhausting, fun, made the money, uh, made a lot of money, spent a lot of money, uh, experienced a lot, no, you know, got to know a lot about what the business world is about. And that was great. But I was like, I still want my degree. Like, and it's not about necessarily, oh, I'm gonna get this degree so I can get a six figure salary so I can go work corporate. No, it was just something that I felt inside of me. Like this has to be broken off my family. That way, if any of my nieces or somebody comes to me and asks me about a degree and nobody in our family has one because we have no clue, nobody finished, everybody started, but nobody finished. And I don't wanna, I didn't wanna be one of those women or people in general who started and didn't finish. And I feel like that was something that needed to be broken off of our generation on both sides of my family, my mom and my dad's side. So I decided to be the one who did it. And I said, okay, fine. 
I'm gonna go to college. I love learning. I love being a student. I love learning all this information I'm learning just on the one class I'm in right now. And you know, why not take that and make that, you know, what I need to do? Like, and I felt kept feeling called to it too. So I said, once I got accepted into the college, I was like, wait, I was just playing y'all. I was just applying just to see. Um, I didn't know y'all was really gonna accept me up in here. So once I got accepted, I had to get back into the groove of knowing how to get registered for classes, making sure everything was paid for, making sure I got a good routine as far as working full time and also getting my classwork done. And I fi and finally got on a good routine with that. And it's still kind of like up and down, like making sure I have a balance. But um, honestly, I just spend like an hour, hour and a half maybe two hours on schoolwork every night to make sure I'm done before the weekend because I was that girl growing up. Like I did not do homework on the weekends. That stuff was done on Friday. I don't care if I had to stay up all night Friday. At least I got my whole weekend to myself. Um, after understanding like I love learning. I love being a student. I want to do this for me. And it's not because, oh, I think I'm going to get this degree and go into the corporate world. I might get the degree and never have to work again. You know, me and my, my husband don't be taking care of me, baby. And so he may just be like, okay, baby, do what you want to do. Follow your passions and your dreams and get the degree. If you want to get the degree, you know, go back to school, be a full-time student, get your degree. I'll support you all the way through that. And yeah, you know, you don't really have to work ever. So you can just get your degree and have it, put it on the wall. That way, if you ever needed it or we ever needed it for something, you know, you wanted to go back to work or you did want to go that route, you would have credibility as far as your credits because credits can never be taken away from you. And then also just like the financial benefits of being in school, as far as taxes, things you can write off, um, the opportunities to be able to get financing, to help you in your adult life, to do more things and to have more, you know, to have more leave room as far as like, you know, just cushion. Um, it was good. Like, so I'm like, okay, seems like a good idea for me. So, and like I said, I love learning and I love, you know, being a student and really learning about what's going on in school today because my professor that I have right now she is so good and I'm taking American government in the middle of an election year so she's on top of it like this lady must love politics because baby she's letting me know about what happened in the past Trump Kamala she's going in and I love that because um just be more educated on that not necessarily I'm not really a political girl I'm not really into the politics I don't be politicking with the crits okay but I do like to be educated and you know know be knowing of these things like so I went back to school and it's, it was in the beginning it was just like I didn't know how to do anything I didn't know how to register for my classes I didn't know that you need to take six credit hours in order to get your student loan so that's something else that um you know if you're going to go the student loan route and you don't go the FAFSA route I didn't know you had to be 24 to file for at FAFSA independent like I've been living on my own since I was 18. They didn't accept that. They said, baby, we're gonna need your parents' information unless you have extraneous circumstances that you can prove through judgment or through being adopted or an orphan or your parents are in the military. When you graduate high school at 18, you technically go to college and you become an independent. Like they don't need, you know, they can have an option to not follow you on their taxes and everything. All of that did not matter. They were like, honey, you're under 24. I don't care if you're about to be 24 in six months, three months, two weeks. We need your parents' information or we're not gonna provide you any other options for FAFSA besides an unsubsidized loan and that's if we allow. It'd have to go through all of that as far as getting registered, finding classes and I originally was like I'm working full-time advisor. I realized how rude and how nonchalant and uninterested since remote work has became a thing that a lot of financial academic advisors are. Maybe it's just the school that I go to I don't know but a lot of them are just like Oh, you need to figure this out and do this yourself or oh we can't really help you with that like they couldn't help me fill out the fafsa they couldn't give me general information i had to call fafsa like about filling it out and making sure things were done the counselor who was like yeah just file an independency appeal then this independency appeal got denied like it was just like so much going on in the beginning because like i had been out of college and been out of like the college get into the you know workflow of that like just knowing how all that works i had been out of the game for that for like five years so it was it was a little journey to get back here, but now I know and I can like move forward with that. So yeah, as um, far as workflow and class flow, it was like an adjustment. Like I was doing really good when I first got into my class. Like I was on top of things like before my class even started, like I had put all my, um, all my due dates, like I have it in my phone, all my due dates for all my uh, classwork. You know how they give you the syllabus at the beginning of the semester? I put all those due dates for every assignment in my calendar and put like two weeks, one week and two day reminders in there so that I would know when a class uh, was, uh, when an assignment or something was due. 
um, because I'm doing online, so it's self-paced, so you really do have to keep up with your assignments yourself, but she does like online lectures, so. Hey y'all, this is Editing Isla, and I just realized I did not close out the video. But yes, so long story short, I've got back into the class flow. I do like an hour and a half, two hours of work at the end of when I get off work every day. And I get off work pretty early. So, you know, I can have like, before it's too late at night, I have a good amount of time and like a good schedule as far as getting in bed like by 10, um, cause I have a workout routine I follow as well. So yeah, I've been able to get a good workflow and a good routine. My goal is to go back to school full time. Um, I don't want to do school part-time. I don't want it to take me... First of all, I'm trying to finish my four-year degree in like three years. Like, because I already have credits and stuff especially. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be back to school full-time eventually. Um, one way or another. Okay? One way or another. Okay? So, yeah, we'll just see how this works out. Because doing one class a semester is just not, not ideal. Not what I'm planning to do for a long period of time. Not going to be doing that. I'm gonna be finishing my four year degree in less than four years um, because I already have the credits. So we're just gonna wait for that time to come. But yes, that's my goals right now. And that's been my experiencing my experience going back to college after five years. Like I just had a lot of like growing pains as far as like learning how to do FAFSA and get accepted back into college and everything. Um, learning how to, you know, make sure like my workflow and everything was good up to date. Baby, if you don't write, you you forget how to write. Um, we realized how much writing we did in school. So yeah, it was just a journey, but I'm so glad I did it and I don't regret anything. And this may be your sign. If you made it this far in the video, please drop a purple green heart in the comments. Um, but yes, uh, I love you guys. And this may be your sign to go back to college, babe. Do it for you, not for anything else, not for the, you know, for the fact of being in the corporate world forever until you die and things like that, but do it for you. Okay. Bye.